Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. A lot of people have been commenting on this channel about the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, and how I could use it as a way to help build the channel because the YouTube algorithm is going nuts for it right now. And I seriously thought about it, and I've come to the conclusion that I will be doing some videos on it. But not in the same way that I think a lot of others do. I want to attack it from a different angle. That's the whole purpose of this channel. That's why I d d had the thought of doing this channel. But before we get into that, let's introduce today's beer, which is Landshark. The uh, premium lager quality. The island style lager. This is a very light lager. Um, it is a little more expensive than Budweiser or Bud Light or things like that and only slightly better than those I would say that as far as loggers go these are definitely fairly good if you have never tried anything better than Budweiser or Bud Light or you've only ever had like Coors Light or whatever I would recommend this it's got a good nice it's a good nice smooth flavor nice solid uh nine dollars for a six pack right now I think that might be a little bit on the expensive side but overall something that you can drink all day and it's not going to get you hammered Unless you start, you know, double fisting them, which I can't do. But without any further ado, let's get into what I'm here to talk about today. And it is the critical mistake that Amazon is making with the Rings of Power and something that they don't understand. Um, and there's actually a couple of critical mistakes that I want to talk about. One of the critical mistakes that I am aware of is that Amazon doesn't actually have the rights to the Silmarillion, which is the time period that everything is set in. And so they are using the appendices at the end of Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, um, to basically cherry-pick their story narrative and fill in the blanks where they think Tolkien never filled in and it's a story that they can tell the problem is is that i as somebody who ha have loved a lot of what tolkien has said in his life i've read many of his quotes uh, over my life um i'm not i wouldn't say that i'm a tolkien scholar by no means am i claiming anything of that nature i i i, I am a tolkien novice at the very least but i did go to a private catholic school when i was younger a traditional private catholic school and we were taught about him and his deep love of his faith and his deep, you know, connection to, you know, nature. And the critical, the critical, critical mistake here is thinking that Tolkien never filled in the story. Or said, oh, well, you couldn't interpret it like this. No, there are many things out there that Tolkien wrote, many quotes that you can find. In fact, I have a couple of quotes pulled up here. Um, but many quotes that you can find from Tolkien that say, no, this is not, you are not allowed to interpret my work in this way. And it's why Christopher Tolkien was so angry about the uh, the Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson trilogy. Understandably so. There was a lot in there that had to be cut out for film purposes. And that is something that is egregious to Tolkien. Although those movies are absolutely fantastic. And I think they are wonderful homages to Tolkien himself. Tolkien and his son would not have liked, didn't like them. And I doubt Tolkien would have had he lived to see them because he wrote his story as it was intended to be read. And those movies were not his intention. The biggest critical mistake that Amazon is making in all of their promotional material and all of their interviews that they're doing, they're talking about how they're bringing, you know, some modernization to Tolkien's work and how they're, making sure that they're representing the certain modern ideals of the world. And essentially, they're taking reality and putting it into fantasy. And I have this quote here. And this is, the one, this is one that I've always loved. Fantasy is escapist. And that is its glory. If a soldier is imprisoned by the enemy, don't we consider it his duty to escape? If we value the freedom of mind and soul, if we're part... If we're part of, Ah, partisans of liberty, then it's our plain duty to escape and to take as many people with us as we can. The power in that quote 
is something that I feel deeply and why I wanted to read it. It's why I was so heavily love music for, for so long. Music, I had to get away from it for a little while because it turned from a, a passion project to an addiction of music and all that. And that's a story for another time. It's why I used to love Star Wars so much. And why the idea of getting people interested into shows. That's why I'm so happy that my wife is watching Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super right now. Because if we are partisans of liberty, then it is our plain duty to escape and to take as many people with us as we can. And that is the point. And the problem is, is that they are not trying to escape reality. They are making sure that we are imprisoned within it. And that even in our own minds, there is no walking away. There is no grander idea, no more emotional center that we can find other than reality itself. But the fact of the matter is, is sometimes it takes fantasy and escapism from the real world to truly understand and reach the next level of our own humanity. And I think this is something that J.R. Tolkien knew intrinsically. He may not have ever said it in those words, but based off of a lot of his quotes, his writings, his letters, he understood humanity and what reality could do to humanity if humanity consumed reality in an overabundance. It's why stories and poems have been passed down for generations and why we look at some of the greatest times in history and then we say, but what were their stories that they told? And what were the things that they held on to? A lot of them were fantasy. And this is the critical mistake that Amazon is making when it comes to the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. They are making sure that nobody can escape from reality, even in their own minds, if only for a moment. And they are trying to shackle us to it. The injection of fantasy and the cross-contamination of it with reality is utterly abhorrent. It's, uh, I, I have some very strong feelings about, you know, certain fandoms and things like that, and how they cannot seem to separate fiction and reality from each other, and why they thus must merge them together. I believe that it is a sickness of the mind and something that we have cultivated culturally inside of this new modern age of storytelling. I think that something like this is so absolutely grotesque to what fantasy is all about and what storytelling is supposed to accomplish. I mean, think about it. If we can ruin anybody's story by injecting or changing or not living up to what those stories are telling us or trying to help us with, then we can go back even into biblical times and ruin the parables that were told by Christ and the apostles or many of the religious figures of other religions. I mean, this is the purpose of it. This is why story and parable are so intrinsically important to the human experience and why they are used in a separate way from reality. Yes, you can use history and you can understand the influences of reality on fiction and storytelling, but the cross-contamination and the gross negligence of those who refuse to see it is going to decimate us. But as long as we hold true to understanding what parable and story and fantasy can tell us and how it can help us discover more about who we are, then ultimately, at the end of the day, we will win. And our children will have a world full of those who are spiritually full and fantastically immersed in the fantasy worlds that we can create separate from reality to make sure that they can have liberty in their own minds. Thank you all so much for watching A Drink With Crazy. And I am so absolutely happy to have every one of you here. Um, we are 510, 511 subscribers now, which is absolutely insane. Everybody has been here and been so supportive of the channel and so <laughs> con constructive. 
hey, man, do this. Hey, do that. Maybe you should look into this. And I am taking all of that into consideration. Hey, do this with your channel. Do that. Cover this topic. I like those things. And if you tell me to do something that I like, I'll take that and I'll, and I'll run with it. And maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. If you tell me to do something I don't like, I'm going to leave it in the comments and I'm not going to do it. I'll take what I like and leave what I don't. But right now, I love everything that is happening with the comments sections of all of the videos that I am doing. You are all having fantastic conversations, connecting with one another, and this little channel is the platform for it. So thank you all so much, and I look forward to seeing you all next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.